Right off the bat, I'm gonna be honest with you. I am not your average contractor. Any expectations you may have, I'd let go of them right now. I'm not here to hold your hand. I'm here to finish the build. Honestly, I do the work. This is not your average home renovation show. Hey guys, hey, okay. Yeah? Excited, first day, of course. Lots to do. Okay guys, I'll talk to you later. All right, ciao. That's interesting. That's what a client looks like. From here on out, it's all text, conversations on emails, phone calls. <laughs> My name is Manny, I'm a contractor. Never thought I'd be in construction, but I fell into it and love it. I kind of do a lot of R&D. I don't always take the A, B route. I'll see something from a product or a magazine or a coffee cup and it will influence me. I'm looking at construction differently. I'm always thinking about new ways of doing old things and it just blows my mind. Like how you could have a conversation with somebody, sketch up something on paper and then turn around and it's right there built, right in front of your eyes. It's a nice discovery. Travel's a big thing for me. So you start going to Europe, you start going to Portugal, you start going to the islands, you start going to Caribbean, and you start looking at how they treat concrete, how they look at tile, how they look at clay, how they look at everything. I was walking around Kyoto, and I was paying attention to some of the structures there. You're looking at a structure that's centuries old. You look at Cuba, how Cuba's structures are integrating into their landscaping. You're walking along a pathway, but then you realize that you're actually in a courtyard. I do the same thing with my construction. You can thank Italy and Pisa mm -hmm. for the wall behind me. When I was walking through the cathedral in Pisa and I started looking at the coffered ceiling and how each coffered box was different in detail and that was fascinating to me how this entire ceiling structure that was limited by these walls on all four sides and how they made everything line up perfectly. That was a challenge with this wall here. I was applying the same idea, the same principles. I don't like a hexagon shape, square. Diamond, triangle, these are pleasing shapes to me. If you take an octagon shape, put it on its bias, you take the squares and the triangles, the miters, the 22 and a halves and the 45s all line up perfectly. And that's when you know you've done something really great. You're working with an octagon, you're working with a triangle, you're working with a square, and they're all lining up perfectly on a horizontal plane. That's what's fascinating to me and much more attractive than a fucking hexagon. Wrapping up this build, getting close to the finish line, I'm always looking out for the next challenge. And the next challenge is 127 Project. Why is it called the 127 Project? It's a 127 year old house. I gotta be respectful of this house. I'm not gonna bulldoze this house. I'm gonna fully gut all four floors, all new mechanical, all new electrical, all new structural. Let's start at the top, master suite, overlooking a rooftop deck. And an oasis in the city is what they want. But as the drawings were finalized, they threw a curveball. We want a hot tub up there. I'm looking at a narrow driveway. I'm looking at a narrow laneway. I'm looking at a house that's blocking my access. How do I get a hot tub up there? I'll solve that later on. Second floor, we've got two bedrooms for the girls. We've got a bath that's gonna be used by the girls and we've got two offices for each parent. Then there's a hallway leading to the front deck. So there's another little small oasis on the front deck there. Main floor is gonna be the most dramatic change of this entire building. We're getting rid of all the walls except for the front vestibule. The idea was to be in the kitchen and see right down the house to the living room and also see the dining room. They wanted to be able to just come downstairs and go right out to the backyard. Then the basement is gonna be an apartment unit down there. They asked me, can we move the apartment from the back of the house to the front of the house so the tenant could access it from the front and then they can reclaim the back for themselves as a family. We're also gonna be underpinning that basement. Right now the basement is six and a half feet high, we're gonna turn it into almost nine feet high. And a sauna, we're throwing a sauna down there as well. So that's gonna be a huge challenge, but it's also gonna be very inviting for any tenants that wanna move in there. This house has been poked and prodded and has had so many contractors, so many families in and out of there, it's been modified, been chopped up, been designed to death. And now I'm gonna take this century old mess of a house and I'm gonna turn it into a modern yet classic home for a family. Uh, the moment the client said, okay, we're going ahead with the rental. Let's do this, Manny. The girls, their daughters, started drawing all over the walls, which I thought was the cutest thing ever because every time I had a meeting with them, I would come in, those drawings grew and they grew. They went from one wall to down the hall to into the bedrooms to everywhere. And unfortunately, it's time.
time to wreck it. Whoa, whoa, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I haven't even introduced you to Greg yet. Greg from Blue Green Group. Blue Green Group is an energy consultant group. They can teach you how to make your home more energy efficient. You can spend a little bit of effort and get a lot of return. For a blower door test, what we're looking to do is we're looking to quantify the total air leakage within a building. Close up all the windows and doors on the outside so that we get a uniform pressure on the inside. And then at different fan speeds, we take a pressure reading or a, or a flow reading through the fan. And you'll see, you'll see the fan as it, as it starts to pull air out. This, uh, this tarp here will, will billow out like a sausage on the inside. There's holes in a house that have to be there, i.e. windows and doors. Then there's other holes that have to be there for mechanical purposes. As lovely as they are, which I do agree, they want to repurpose a lot of the stained glass. Yeah. And I know you mentioned that you have a guy that can actually take those and put them into new windows. Yeah, put them into a thermal pane. You're dealing with over 100 years of people renovating. Right, so different families have come through here, different tenants have come through here. So yep. now we're gonna get the whole big surprise, right? So <laughs> Good surprise! So you have to figure out how you seal these holes and they have to be sealed properly. Otherwise your house is gonna have problems down the line. This here is my smoke pencil. It just has a very light, visible white smoke and you can see the air leakage. So on the main floor, I guess the biggest concern is um, this party wall. Yep but we have a semi-detach. Yeah. We want to seal the house and we want to build it better, but then we also have clients that love the idea of this party wall. Problem is, like, how do you control building an envelope with a party wall? So making sure that this is airtight is going to be a, a problem because it's exposed brick. So noise travels on air leakage. Uh, you'll get smoke from cooking odors. Cooking odors coming through these holes. Tobacco. Now, having said that, you know, you know, you can you can reparge around here. And we're gonna have to figure out how to seal it properly yep. without changing the overall aesthetic the of it. Yeah. Because you can't control who moves in. There. No. This is going to be turned into storage space. Yep. There's gonna be a walkout. Yep. That's going to lead into the basement for the basement apartment. Well, a lot of times this, this, this sort of storage area here was responsible for a lot of bad indoor air quality. You've got white, green, we got all kinds of, mold here. what did you call it, camel so mold? As we start to move into a basement, because real estate is so expensive now. This is actual valuable square footage. Here so third floor, which I guess many, many years ago used to be an attic. We get up here, there's a significant difference in temperature. That tells me building an envelope is not working properly. This is a tall, sort of Victorian yeah. style house. Yeah. The insulated wall to window ratio in this third floor is really high. Yeah. And for that reason, you'll have accelerated heat loss at nighttime when the sun's set, and then uh, really high heat gain in the middle of the day when the sun's out. De definitely controlling that with better quality windows. Put a toque on this house, make it as airtight as possible, yeah. and, and getting, getting all those air sealing details right on the top floor, super important. Interesting, there's gonna be a hot tub in there as well. It's gotta get craned in. You with champagne. In the tub, in. in the tub. So how are we looking, Greg? Uh, put the shillelagh down and I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, it's not looking good in terms of- I wasn't here. expecting it to be looking good, but uh, 127 years. Yes, so essentially right now we're sitting at about 10 air changes per hour. So it's a, it's a very leaky house given the volume. It's interesting how the basement has been renovated, the attic has been renovated, and partially the second floor has been renovated. Yep. But it doesn't seem like they did anything regarding the building envelope during those renovations. It's a good observation. So now it's all left up to me, you, our crew. A lot of contractors don't care about spending a little bit of effort and getting a lot of return. They just care about dollars. They just care about cut as much as you possibly can so I can make as much as I possibly can. I'm not about that, Greg's not about that. I don't like working with people like that. And he's also a funny guy. This is Hardcore Reynolds.